Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It is time for tarot scopes. We're going to be doing the tarot scopes for the sign of Leo. That's Leo Sun, Leo Moon, and Leo Rising for the month of March 2024. Um, we have moved out of the month of um, February, which was very um, exciting, transformational, trying to think of the best words we can use ground earth shaking groundbreaking <laughs> keep going <laughs> and now we move into march now march does um have its challenges uh, but it is um a little bit less energetically intense than um february but uh april promises to be another very intense month so this is a little bit of a respite, although you, well, I guess we'll see. We'll see if I'm right, right? So before we get to the um, tower reading, uh, I'm going to look at your uh, your astrology for the month of, uh, of March. So let's let's start with that. Okay. All right, let's get to Leo. And we're going to do a nice little slideshow here. Oops, I guess I didn't get to Leo, even though I thought I had. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Not too far. All right, so we're looking at the sign of Leo. And as you know, Leo, you are a fire sign. And you are, in fact, a fixed fire sign. Your mantra is, I will. Uh, most Leos that I know get everything they put their will to and uh first it's an idea and then it's uh a, a desire i <laughs> get it your ruling planet of course is the sun the sun being the star of our solar system and um of course leos are stars in general uh, usually if you go to a party and there's a group of people surrounding one person and everybody's laughing and yucking it up. Usually that's the Leo <laughs> in the middle. So uh, Leo is highly creative, um, self-expressive. If you want to know how a Leo feels, well, you sometimes don't even have to ask them. You just have to watch them and uh, and see what uh, what they're shining on. Uh, in the moment, in the moment. So let's take a look. Um, I just want to point out, of course, that uh, 2024 is an eight vibration year. In the tarot, the eight card is associated with the strength card. And the strength card, of course, is the Leo card. And so you are shining bright this year, Leo. Uh, wherever Leo falls in your chart, uh, it is being... Um, it is being highlighted. It's being highlighted. And as if you're a Leo rising, this could be your, uh, your year, Leo. This could be your year to shine bright. However, that being said, and it's not really however, it's, a, it's more of an end. That being said, um, eight is also the vibration of as you sow, so shall you reap. It's a manifestation um, energy. So you will manifest those seeds that you've sown hopefully, uh, over the last number of years, uh, you've sown some good seeds and you will see them manifest as well as the seeds that you sow right now will manifest. Things will manifest pretty quickly um, this year because of that. Um, all right, so let's, let's uh, look at Leo for March. So we start March off with a really nice aspect especially for Leos, because you're ruled by the sun. We have the sun making a waning sextile to Jupiter. Now, most of the times you hear me say sextile or waning sextile, that is the energy moving us in a more progressive direction. So we have at this time uh, a lot of energy moving in the direction of betterment for all, for humanitarianism. OK, so so generally the, the theme at this time is what can we do to further humanity? 
what can we do to further make it better for humanity and the world that humanity lives uh, upon. Um, and we'll also see there are a lot of squares. All the squares this month are last quarter crisis and consciousness squares. And those squares are crisis producing as all squares are, but these specific squares deal with an, an, a need to change your mind about something, change how you uh, how you function in relationship to authority, kind of becoming an authority in your own life, but not to be a law onto yourself necessarily, um, but to know your own will, know your own mind, and move forward uh, in a more progressive, collective, and humanitarian direction. Okay, so the sun sextile Jupiter. Jupiter is very lucky. So this you start the month with a, a quite a bit of luck, and so your your star is is shining bright this uh, this month, Leo. Um, after uh, the next aspect, that's a major aspect, is uh, happens on the third, and this is Venus making a last quarter square to Uranus. Now Venus is the is the planet associated with love, money, relationships, and when we have a square from Uranus, there can be changes and it oftentimes unexpected changes that may require you to move in a new direction. Okay, um, and move away from what society deems is proper or correct, and you're pretty much following your own heart in this one. Okay. Uh, it can also be that uh, something happens creating a crisis that you just have to react to. And the the main energy for this is to uh, be willing to let go, but not necessarily feel guilty about it, okay? On uh, the fourth, Mercury makes a sextile to Uranus. Again, this is uh, an energy of progressive change made even more so by the fact that we're dealing with Uranus, uh, which is all about humanitarianism and all about change and all about the future and all about raising uh, boats. And then Mercury in, um, uh, Mercury at this point is in Pisces. So Mercury, you know, Mercury in Pisces is pretty empathetic, sympathetic. This is an opportunity for us to um, move forward with the idea that we are sort of one humanity, but it's also um, Uranus within within the energy of Uranus, we have our individuated unconscious. And when it connects with Mercury, which is a planet that deals with our ability to know things sort of on a, a logical level or on a, where we are aware, we are aware of what we know, what we're seeing, what we're uh, experiencing. We could have some past life memories come up. You could have some memories from the past come up and you can also have visions of the future uh, to be seen. So it's a very exciting time and a time when your third eye is wide open. So be aware of that. On the 8th of March, Mercury conjuncts Neptune. Now this is uh, happening in uh, 27 degrees of Pisces. Neptune is almost out of Pisces, guys. It's been there since 2011. And uh, it's been uh, very interesting, uh, Neptune and Pisces. It's interesting because Neptune rules plastics, because Neptune rules um, oil, and Neptune rules the oceans. And one of our biggest problems is plastics in the ocean, right? There's a whole uh, almost continent of plastic in the ocean in the in the uh, Pacific in the Pacific Ocean. So um, it can, you know. Neptune and Pisces were like, "Ooh, what's that going to be like? Well, it's going to be an ocean full of plastic is, is what it ended up being, right? Uh, among other things, that's not the only thing, but it's almost out and it's going to be going into Aries soon. So uh, that'll be interesting. We'll talk about that when the time comes. But this conjunction does happen in your eighth house. There's a lot of activity this month in your eighth house. We have uh, the sun and we have um, Venus and we'll have Mars in that eighth house along with um, Mercury. And then, and so Venus and Mercury and the sun will go through at this time of the year, almost every year. It's going to be around that 
eighth house, not always completely in the eighth house, but for the most part, it uh, Mercury and uh, Venus sort of move along with the sun. Mars, on the other hand, is only with the sun every other year, and Mars is there. So Mars energizes uh, at all the signs when it's with the sun and, and Venus and, and Mercury. So there's this energizing energy of Mars in, uh, in Pisces, uh, although Mars doesn't go into Pisces till later in the, in the month. But this is just a point to make that that eighth house is very, very active. Now, we also have Saturn in that eighth house for you, and um, that only comes around every 29 years or so. So it's been a while since Saturn's been in there, but it moved in there uh, last March and uh, is there for about almost three years. So uh, for those of you who, um, you know, this is, it's the house of taxes and the house of debt and the house of uh, money that comes to you through through death. And so you might have that kind of experience. And, and because of all the energy in that house, that may be something that you experience this month, not necessarily, but certainly for the longer standing planets there, uh, you definitely wanna make sure that you have your taxes all set up in the, in the correct way. Uh, Mercury conjunct um, uh, Neptune, in that house will make you even more psychic than you already are. So, so know that you will be feeling things and sensing things even more intensely. On the ninth, Mars makes a last quarter square to Uranus. This is the same square that Venus made. The only difference is Venus is a nicer planet and Mars can be kind of cantankerous. And so this is actually a dangerous time, um, in general, because of Mars and Uranus, because you never really know what to expect with Uranus and Mars can be aggressive. So just be aware that around the ninth, things can be a little hairy, as they say. On the same day, we actually have three things happen on that day. So not only do we have Mars in a very energetic square to the very energetic planet of Uranus and Mars being very energetic and also still being in Aquarius. So Mars is in Aquarius when this happens. Um, so it is very mentally stimulating. In fact, you might feel like you're, you're, you know, like you need to like take a rest. The next week's going to be a little bit uh, easier on the rest, on the rest uh, meter. So you'll have an opportunity perhaps the next week to rest from what occurs on this week. Uh, but we do have the sun, your ruling planet, sextiling Uranus. Remember it's sextile Jupiter as it started. Now it's sextiling Uranus. Now you might not say, you might say, oh no, not Uranus again. But sextiles are much easier to work with with Uranus because Uranus awakens us to things and sextiles are mental stimulating and move us in the direction of that progressive thinking. So it's easier to change your mind with this. It's easier to be open to the promptings of sort of different, uh, different way of looking at things. Um, and we have Mercury, the planet of the mind, moving into Aries. Now, Aries is a fellow fire sign. So when Mercury moves into Aries, you get jazzed up because you're also fire. Mercury moving into the ninth house. This is where you really look into the ideas of truth. Truth. So you, you are very much in, uh, you'll very much have an opinion and most likely will express that opinion. Week two, this is the rest week, if we could call it that. We have uh, a new moon in the sign of Pisces. This is in your eighth house. Now, the eighth house is also our intimate relationships, right? And so this can be a time when you can perhaps rekindle a flame here with your intimacy uh, with people. Uh, it's also a time when you might want to get a loan for something um, because this is the house of debt. And so be aware of what you're getting yourself into always, um, you know, but this is a time when perhaps um, that, that loan that you needed to further whatever it is you wanted to further, this comes through for you. Um, on the same day, we also have Mercury making a waning sextile to Pluto, um, Mercury making a waxing sextile to Pluto. Sorry, it's waxing. This opens the lines of communication with the soul. Okay, so listen with your inner ears there to see what the soul is telling us. 
On the 11th, uh, Venus, the planet of love, moves out of Aquarius, which she doesn't mind being in, really. She's kind of noncommittal in a way. Like, she, it's not good. It's not bad in Aquarius. She kind of likes it. She gets to hang out with her friends. Uh, but then she moves into Pisces, and Pisces is the sign that uh, she's um, exalted in, and she really, really likes that. So Venus in that house of orgasms, perhaps. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. On the third week, March 17th, the sun conjuncts Neptune. And this starts the synodic cycle between the sun and Neptune. Uh, it's a year long cycle. And of course, it's always going to happen in the sign that Neptune is in because the sun spends a month in the sign and Neptune spends 14 years. In fact, we've been having these sun Neptune conjunctions since 2011. The sun likes to delineate things. It, it illuminates things, whereas Neptune tends to fuzz things up. This is happening on St. Patrick's Day, so be careful if you're out there, if you're out drinking green beer or not drinking green beer, drinking some other kind of delicious beer uh, and celebrating with your friends. Make sure that you have somebody who uh, is not impaired uh, to, to drive you around, as it were, um, because Neptune tends to fog things up. We might even have like, weather in which it's really hard to see where you're going. So even if you're not drinking beer, <laughs> green or otherwise, uh, you need to be extra careful on the 17th um, around do doing things like driving and the like. It's a great day to meditate, though. It's a great day to connect with spirit. It's a great day to be creative. It's a great day to imagine, but it's not the best day to drive around <laughs> because a lot of people aren't paying attention to the lines in the road. All right. I have a candle on here and I keep smelling like something's, this is too hot. No, okay, it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, am I gonna burn the house down? The answer is no. Oh, I know, it's my husband, he's cooking. I thought it was my candle. All right, never mind. On the 19th, the sun will ingress into Aries. This is the start of spring in the northern hemisphere, right? The sun, your 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 sign moving into Aries and coming up out of the great cosmic sea. This is also a very stimulating time for you. So you're going to be stimulated by Mercury moving into Aries and then the sun moving into Aries. And it does sort of bring up that ninth house um, um, goals. This is the house of goals. This is the house of having the plan. And so you might start working on your next great plan, as it were. March 21st, the sun makes a, a waning sextile to Pluto. This again brings that humanitarian energy forward. And of course, Pluto is now in Aquarius. So, so in its, in, in its own way, just Pluto being in Aquarius brings up humanitarian concerns. And then we get a punch of energy from the sun uh, and a sextile, which is a sextile of progressive change. So that's that's kind of exciting. At the, On the same day, Venus will conjunct Saturn. Now, Venus and Saturn are an interesting pair because Venus is fun and Saturn is the wet blanket, especially in Pisces. Saturn takes things very seriously. And Venus in Pisces is very compassionate and empathetic and wants to move in the direction of oneness and healing. And we are all one and, and all of that. And Saturn makes things real. Venus can also in Pisces can be a tad uh, illusionary, delusionary. Um, and so that can also, the seed can be planted for that as well. But I like to think of Venus and Pisces conjunct Saturn and Pisces as a plan for the healing plan for the healing and the love and the empathy. March 22nd, Mars ingresses into Pisces. Now Mars um, doesn't like being in Pisces. Mars likes to move in straight lines. Mars likes to know where it's going. And Pisces is the fishes, right? Fish moving in two, di two different directions or opposite directions. Mars is very powerful in Pisces um, when we're connected to our spiritual uh, purpose. Otherwise, it can be a little bit a sea. 
um, in uh, in the great cosmic sea that is that is Pisces. But it is an extraordinarily creative time. Uh, but we're kind of stirring the the great we're stirring the waters of the cosmic sea here with with Mars, and so uh, our imaginations um, really get going. And so you can imagine wonderful things, or you can imagine terrible things. My suggestion to you is stick to the positive. Stick to the positive. Week four, we have Venus on the 24th making a sextile to Jupiter. This is a lovely aspect. Venus and Jupiter are known as the benefics. This is a time when you can go out with friends. It's very friendly. It's very, uh, the, the lines of communication are open. You're talking about the things that excite you, making plans for the future. How can we make the world a better place? We're going to do it together. There's very much that, that energy with this sextile. And then on the 25th, we have the full moon in Libra. Now, the full moon is an eclipse. And so we're starting eclipse season. You're like, didn't we just have eclipse season? Did, wasn't that last week? No, that was six months ago. But it's been so intense. That it feels like it was last week because I don't really think anything has calmed down at all from the last eclipse. In fact, things have gotten more and more intense as we go. And so we're going to have this full moon eclipse. It is a full moon. So it 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 opens an axis or it, it makes us aware of two parts of ourselves and it is the axis of the mind. And so our both our logical minds where the moon um, the moon will be and our and our intuitive mind where the sun will sit uh, gets sparked and uh, and it's we're really sort of this is a very psychic time for everybody, but you know Leo is a very psychic sign anyway. So uh, all kinds of information coming in, all kinds of realizations happening, um, all of it informing us as to the best direction for ourselves, really. And um, it is a Libra full moon and Libra is the South node. And so we may be required to let go of a relationship. Now, it does fall in your third house as a Leo rising anyway. And so uh, you might see a neighbor move away. You may move away from your neighbor, uh, or it could be a sibling thing. There could be an issue with a sibling, or you could resolve an issue with a sibling. So it doesn't mean they're out of your life, but maybe the problem is out of your life. You know what I'm saying? All right. And March 28th, the last day. As we started with a lovely sextile <laughs> to start the month, we end the month with a lovely sextile. This time it's between Venus and Uranus. Venus, of course, is the planet of love, the planet of money. Uranus is realizations and awakening. So we're awakened to where uh, our our love and our money best are best served. And of course, because we're dealing with a waning sextile, we have to include the energy of humanitarianism with that. So that is the story, Morning Glory. All right, let me uh, stop the share here. Now I have been uh, pulling a uh, Oracle card. This is from a new deck that I just got uh, recently. Mystic Sisters Oracle deck by Emily Balavet. Balavet. She does uh, some of my favorite art. And so... Um, I was looking through um, U.S. Games. They're the the company that does the Rider Waite deck. I was like, I wonder what other decks they do. And so I was looking and I noticed that that she had an Oracle deck and I love her art. I was so excited. So I ordered it. <laughs> and I've been working with it a little bit. I haven't I worked it at, with it too much. So I will read it from the book. But uh, let's pick a card. We're going to only pick one. And then we're going to get to it with the uh, Arcanum deck, with the Arcanum deck for the tarot reading. All right, let me see if you can, um, if I can fix my, my. Okay. This, I have a little trick. Just give me a second here. Okay. <laughs> my trick. I just can't move. I just have to sit right here in this spot. It unfocuses my camera. Urania. 
Urania, isn't that a beautiful card? I mean, look at that, just so beautiful. Urania, I'll read it to you. All right. Of course, it has to do with astrology. <laughs> Here we go. Philosophy, knowledge, and intelligence. I'm going to hold it up for you. So it is such a pretty card. You might as well enjoy it while I'm reading. There we go. Urania is an ancient Greece, Greek muse of astronomy. Her energy is directed toward endless expansion of the mind. She represents the enthusiastic and dedicated student with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. When we take the opportunity to expand our knowledge of any particular subject, an interconnectedness of all truths can be recognized. When drawn, Urania encourages you to travel in your mind, imagine other possibilities, and playfully philosophize about alternative reality maps. She encourages further education or using your knowledge you've already obtained to its fullest potential. So this, a lot of the astrology sort of lines up with this about imagining a new world, right? And then working towards that world. So that's a very, very apt for the astrology. And uh, let's take a look. We're going to use the Arcanum deck, as I said. For Leo, I often use this deck for Leo because it is so beautiful and lovely. Okay, almost, yes. I got them all now. We're going to read. We got to read all 78 cards, right? <laughs> okay, let's just do a little shuffle here. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. The, whoops, the Lido Shuffle. Boz Gags, one of my favorites. San Francisco. Lido left the boat that day. He left the something. He ain't coming back. <laughs> Lido left and he ain't coming back. There's also a beach in Venice called Lido. I sat on it <laughs> in my bikini back in 1983 <laughs> when I could wear a bikini. Oh my God, Venice, what a beautiful place. City of Venus, beautiful place. Definitely get a chance, if you have a chance, ever get a chance to see Venice, you really should. It is the most romantic place I have ever been. I haven't been to Paris, so Paris could also be romantic, but Venice was just, oh. And, you, you know, with uh, climate change, you just don't know how long it's going to be there, you know? All right, let's take a look. Oh, how I got to Venice from, from San Francisco. All right, so you've been working on balancing. It's been hard. It, the, you've really been required to walk the straight and narrow. And if you haven't been working, walking the straight and narrow, this card is saying that you need to be very careful about how you move forward. The temperance card is a card of spiritual initiation. Um, as you can see in this card, she has a cauldron and she has fire and water blending. This is alchemy. Okay. Fire is spirit. Water is soul. When spirit and soul come together, it creates the mind and it creates the body. And so this is a very creative time this is a Sagittarius vibration so another uh water uh fire sign it's uh crossed by the knight of pentacles the knight of pentacles is a very patient knight and so be patient with yourself as you move forward be patient with others we're all sort of trying to um we're all well I don't know if we're all doing our best but we can only do what we do when we do it right so just be patient and be patient with yourself as well so at the root here is justice uh is truth this is um another very pointed uh energy but a decision has been made perhaps but you need to stand on your truth that's what this card says you need to stand on your truth in the past 
Ooh, we have relationship, uh, usually positive, it's usually a positive card, this card of love. And this is about relating to, to somebody, excuse me, on an equal, a, in a balanced way. Not one person is more important than the other. One person's life is, is more important than the other person's life. It's like equal. In the sky, we have the king of wands. This is about having dominion over your spirit. So you have dominion. You have dominion over your own spirit and what you do with that spirit and what you create with that spirit. So we have the three of swords in the immediate environment. There's some heartbreak here. Uh, perhaps you had your heart bro broken or something broke your heart. Um, it is, uh, it's a difficult energy to work with, but understand that any losses that come through this month will ultimately free you and open your heart even more. So even if it's not exactly, um, whatever is lost is, 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 is lost because it doesn't serve you anymore on some level. Uh, of course, if it's a person and if it's a relationship, they don't serve me. That's not what I mean. It's like, it's time to progress from that point. How it's seen from the outside. Oh, that, uh, Something is coming to an end. So there's the energy of something is coming to an end. People see it. I think you see it as well. Uh, but that ending starts a new beginning. The ending starts a new beginning. Your domestic situation, we have another. This is the lover's card. This is about choice. Maybe you're making a choice around relationship. Hopes and fears, abandonment, abandonment. Fearing that if you turn your back on something you've put a lot of energy into, it's going to be the wrong thing to do. Outcome, the two of pentacles. So fostering balance through uh, emotional, emotionally turbulent waters, okay? Uh, balancing the books, balancing finances. Remember, there's a lot of energy in that eighth house. So you want to make sure that you're looking forward, taking into consideration what you owe. You know what I mean? Let's see if we can get a major arcana. We have the queen of wands. There you are, the queen, the Leo queen. <laughs> so you're still the queen of your domain. The king of pentacles. So there could be uh, somebody, uh, it, it could be a man, but if it's not a man, it's somebody who has a dominion over their finances that may be able to help you in a situation here. And, uh, oh, the nine of pentacles, which is the self-made person. So this is one of actually one of my favorite cards in the deck. So I wouldn't worry too much about money, but you do maybe need to get some good uh, advice on your taxes or how to go about it or what to do or what not to do. Maybe you need some financial advice. Let's see what's underneath it. Um, the three of cups, which is about friendship and camaraderie and, and happiness. The 10 of swords, something coming to an end and the death card change. So, there's definitely a sense here that there is perhaps well, any losses that you experience this month are necessary and are um, sort of predetermined in a way um, because whatever it is, it's preventing you from taking the next step. And it's time. It's just time. The time has come. For you to move on from something and it is going to be i can't i don't want to um um blow sunshine where sunshine generally doesn't go right um uh, it will be challenging but i think ultimately you're going to be in better stead because of it so um yeah okay that's what's happening guys i have a leo rising so I'm like, oh, great. So we'll do it together, guys. We'll do it together. Okay. Uh, have yourself a great month, you know, or whatever. Um, know that um, you are supported, that you're loved, and that 
you know, we always have, things don't always work out the way we imagine they're going to work out, but generally things do work out for the best. And so if you can keep that uh, in your heart, I think, um, yeah, I think you'll be okay. In the end, you'll be okay. It just may be a little bumpy on the way. Okay. All right, guys. Well, have yourself a, as I said, a, a good month. Like and subscribe if you would, even after that reading. Hopefully you still like me and you'll still want to give me a thumbs up or subscribe. Uh, if you would like to have a reading with me, I do combination astrology, numerology, and Kabbalah readings. They're very different from probably anything else that you've had. Uh, they're very informative. I offer an hour, an hour and a half readings. If it's your first time, I do like to have the extra time if you can see yourself through to do it. Um, there's not much of a price difference between the hour and the hour and a half. Uh, if you are just doing uh, like an update, you've been you've seen me before, hour is usually sufficient um, for that. I can do just the astrology if that's what you want, but I do like to, it's hard for me just to do one thing. So I will probably stick a little numerology and Kabbalah in that as well. But, um, and if you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon page. All the links are below. Uh, so if you want a reading, you can get the link below. If you want to be a patron, there's a link below and there is the thumbs up below. So do me the thumb, do me the favor, do me the solid and give me a thumbs up. Okay. Have a great time, uh, despite the challenges and uh, I'll see you again next month. Take care, everyone. Namaste.